I'm Carla Nell. Thank you for joining us and taking an interest in how the ISO operates Ontario's electricity system and how we are planning for the future of electricity in Ontario. It is truly a transformational time for Ontario's electricity system, and we appreciate you joining us for this journey. Our population and economy are growing at an unprecedented pace and scale. Industries are changing. The ways that people live and work are shifting. At the same time, the world is working towards decarbonization, all of which is contributing to an increase in demand for electricity. For Ontario to keep growing, we need a reliable, affordable, and sustainable electricity system. To meet future needs, we'll need a variety of solutions, including transmission and local supply options. As we develop these solutions, we're encouraging everyone to join the conversation. And we need to hear from you so that we can make informed decisions about how to meet the province's future energy needs. Throughout the province, we are preparing regional plans and talking to Ontarians to gain a better understanding of what their needs are locally. So we appreciate you taking the time to learn more about this important work. This introductory video is an important first step. In it, we'll explain what the ISO's role is, how we plan for the future, and how you can contribute to the planning process. You will hear from our technical experts about what kind of supply we need and how we make sure that energy is delivered to homes and businesses. So let me first share some background and context to set the table for today's discussion. The ISO is the provincial agency at the heart of Ontario's electricity system. We operate Ontario's power grid in real time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As your electricity grid operator, we balance supply and demand and direct the flow of electricity across the province on a second by second basis. We also plan for the reliability, affordability, and sustainability of Ontario's electricity system, not just in real time, but well into the future. Quite simply, we keep the lights on across Ontario. Occasionally people ask us about the difference between the ISO and utilities such as Ontario Power Generation, Hydro One, or other local hydro companies. Unlike those organizations, the ISO does not own any of the system's assets or infrastructure. We do not own nuclear, hydro or gas plants, storage facilities, or renewables like wind turbines and solar panels, nor do we own the transmission and distribution poles and wires that carry electricity from generators to communities. Those are owned by public and private entities that are licensed by the Ontario Energy Board. Our responsibility is to make sure that the entire system, which includes those assets and infrastructure, is working together to provide a reliable electricity service to the province. At the ISO, we are responsible for planning, procuring, coordinating, and balancing the flow of electricity across the system. The people working in the ISO's control room, where the system is managed, are often compared to air traffic controllers. But instead of safely guiding planes, we move electrons around the system so people have reliable access to electricity where and when they need it. As this image indicates, communities play an important role at every stage in the system. Communities are home to millions of consumers, including residents, businesses, institutions, and industry that all require power to meet their daily needs. Communities inform decisions about how to meet future energy needs. Communities are hosts for generators that produce energy, as well as the transmission lines that are necessary to carry it. Communities are also partners with local distribution companies to serve the needs of consumers. And of course, communities themselves are also energy consumers. From beginning to end, communities play a role in Ontario's electricity system because they are both the catalysts and centers for demand. And at the same time, communities are also critical to decisions about what type of and where electricity infrastructure can be located. That is also where the ISO comes in. As the province's electricity planners, we are responsible for anticipating demand over a long-term planning horizon. We do this to ensure that the infrastructure needed to support and enable population and economic growth is in place when it's needed. It is our job to make sure our electricity system is ready to serve not only current needs, but to meet future demand as well. And what we're seeing is a significant need for more electricity in the years ahead. Electricity supply and transmission lines take a significant amount of time to build, which is why the electricity system needs to grow and stay ahead of demand as it increases. Fundamental to our system and what guides the ISO are three words, reliable, affordable, and sustainable. 
These aspects support an electricity system that is the backbone of communities to grow. I hope that the information we share through this video motivates more people to get involved in the planning we're undertaking for the future of Ontario. Throughout our engagement process, we will bring stakeholders, Indigenous communities, and community members into the discussion. We look at the unique needs of each region and consider the available options. This includes looking at local resources such as wind and solar, energy storage, conservation, and others to meet the needs of the area. Your input will inform all aspects of this process as we build momentum and galvanize collaboration across the province. Because in order to go far, we must go together. In fact, our shared energy future depends on it. So with that as an introduction, I will now turn it over to my colleague, Dave Devereaux, the IESO's Director of Resource Planning. Dave leads our team that plans for the future and determines what kind of generation, conservation, and other forms of supply we need to maintain reliability and sustainability. Over to you, Dave. Hello, I'm Dave Devereaux. I'm the Director of Resource Planning at Ontario's IESO. I'm responsible for our long-term demand forecast as well as our long-term supply outlook. Today, we'll be talking about Ontario's evolving electricity system needs, as well as our plans to meet them. Let's start by looking at the different sources of electricity here in Ontario. Ontario enjoys a very diverse mix of electricity generation sources. Throughout our history, we've added from the original hydroelectric generation to fossil fuel generation, nuclear, and lately renewables. As we look at how we use these various types of generation, they each play a distinct and important part in that integrated system. So starting on the left side of this slide, looking at nuclear and baseload hydroelectric, these are the sources of supply that run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Their advantage is that they produce great deals of energy, um, but they're not as movable. So as, as demand goes up and down, they're not as suitable for following that demand. Rather, they, they mimic the baseload supply that is there 24 hours a day. So think of our large nuclear plants around southern Ontario, as well as our large run-of-the-river hydro plants. So think of the St. Lawrence River, parts of the Ottawa River, or the Niagara. Layered onto that is our intermediate and peaking resources, the ones that follow demand as it varies throughout the day. For us, we're able to peak uh, hydroelectric and vary its output to an extent. We also rely on natural gas fire generation to fill this role. So as the demand comes through uh, in a typical business day, it picks up from breakfast through the afternoon and to an evening peak, then drops back out through the evening into the overnight low. It's these resources that help us follow that supply and demand balance. And more recently on our system, in the last 20 years or so, we've been adding renewable uh, supply, both in the form of solar as, as well as wind. The advantages of these are they're, they're fairly low cost, as well as no emissions. Um, the challenge with them is that they're very intermittent. So if the sun's not shining or the wind's not blowing, they're not there. So we rely on the rest of the system to balance that out. When you look at it all together, though, it, it's an integrated system. It's something that has delivered very reliable supply of electricity to Ontario in the past, and we'll need to continue to build on it and grow on it as the demand grows in the future. Next slide show the installed capacity of the system as we have it today. Uh, so those sources of electricity that I described on the left side of this chart, this is the supply as we have it today in Ontario. And it's not exact, but I, I, I like to think of it in terms of four buckets, roughly four quarters. You can see the nuclear is, is actually closer to a third. Uh, of our installed capacity. And that when we say installed, we mean the name plate maximum output of the, of the resource as it as it was built. Call it about a quarter nuclear though, about a quarter gas, about a quarter hydroelectric, and then the, the rest is the wind, solar, and biofuels. Um, together, these um, create a very diverse mix that's very resilient to different weather types, so, uh, swings in fuel prices, uh, as well as uh, changes in demand. The right side of the graph shows how we actually use them. So if you recall, we talked about the base load generation, those things that run 24 seven, that you can tell that nuclear is filling that role for Ontario. So you see that almost well over half, almost 60% of our electricity comes from nuclear power as a, as a function of it running 24 seven. Hydroelectric fills in that quarter that you would expect uh, based on its installed capacity. And you can see that we don't use gas to the same extent that you might think based on its installed capacity. It gets used for those peaking conditions and for those times when it's not windy or, or sunny. When we look at Ontario's electricity demand, 
uh, it is expected to grow very significantly between now and 2050. As we think about the things that are driving that growth, uh, we look to the population of Ontario, which is growing very quickly. Uh, there was over 500,000 people uh, moved to Ontario last year. We're seeing industrial growth and a uh, very strong economy here that's leading to the uptick in demand here through the 2020s. And through the long term, uh, what we're seeing is a great deal of electrification in, in the form of transportation and electric vehicles, but also in an industrial uh, load that is uh, supplying those the electric vehicle production, as well as the manufacturing that we're expecting in Ontario, along with mining. Overall, we expect it to grow between now and 2050. That demand forecast is based on the policies in place today uh, that are firm and expected to come. In a fully decarbonized Ontario economy, that demand will be higher. Looking at that demand over the long term, as well as the supply that is available to us, we see a period of growing need. So the way to interpret this graph, if you look at the green line, that is how much we need to meet the expected demand. The bars underneath represent the resources that we have committed to us, either through long life regulated assets. So think of nuclear plants, hydroelectric plants, or contracted with the ISO, the uh, renewable fleet, the gas fleet. Uh, you can see the contracts for those renewable and gas fleets uh, tapering off through the 2030s. There will be um, opportunity to extend some of them through competitive procurements uh, if they have life left. So in some cases, there are more years of operation available in a wind farm when it's uh, reaching the end of its contract or a gas plant as it reaches the end of its contract. But you can see we have a very clear need for new supply as well as opportunities to extend existing supply from the 2030s all the way up to 2050. There'll be significant construction required to meet that expected need. But it's not all about just building new supply. Uh, conservation and demand management can play a significant role in meeting our system needs. Uh, when we look at uh, building out on the scale that we will need to, we often say that the, uh, the cheapest megawatt is a megawatt saved. So we'll be actively looking for ways to conserve energy and to use less or to use it more efficiently. Our conservation programs are managed through the uh, Save on Energy brand through the ISO. If you have a smart thermostat, check out our Peak Perks program. Uh, there's an opportunity for you as a homeowner to uh, participate and uh, contribute to system needs by shaving peaks on those hot, sticky summer days. We estimate, uh, looking back uh, at the programs we already have in place, that our demand today is about 15% lower than it would be, would it not be for the uh, conservation programs in place today. So we're really excited and looking forward to the ability to uh, grow them out further and mitigate somewhat that uh, need to grow new electricity supply. Looking at emissions, uh, overall Ontario's electricity supply is actually in a pretty good spot. When we plan our system, we're responsible for electricity. So we're very conscious of the emissions that our system produces. But we do have to step back from time to time and consider the uh, role of electricity emissions in Ontario's overall emissions, because emissions are really uh, an economy-wide issue and need to be treated as a, as a global issue. When you look at Ontario's overall emissions, Ontario's electricity system is responsible for about 3% of our emissions. By far and away, the uh, biggest sources of emissions in our economy are transportation, all, all those vehicles we drive, manufacturing and industry, and uh, space heat. We do have winters here in Ontario, and an awful lot of our emissions come from heating our, our buildings. Thinking back to that demand curve, those are the things we're electrifying. So if you think of that increase in demand that's going uh, to come here, that is your electric vehicles, that's the manufacturing to produce those electric vehicles, and that's heat pumps to replace some of our furnaces. So think of uh, as that demand grows, uh, there will be times, we have to be frank, uh, where we will need to burn gas to keep an electricity system reliable and cost effective, uh, but it is contributing to significant emissions reductions in other parts of the economy and an overall reduction in the emissions of Ontario. We have a number of actions in flight today from new commitments to small hydroelectric generation. We're seeing our battery fleets start to come online uh, as we're working on capacity arrangements with Quebec to better uh, utilize the two systems where we're, at least for the next few years, we are a summer peaking resource with hot summers and air conditioning load. They're a winter peaking system with uh, baseboard heat and cold winters. So we're able to work together until about the 2030s when our winter peak will start to catch up with us. Through 2028 or so, we will start to see the rest of the battery fleet come online. And then later in the 2020s and into the early 2030s, we'll see the small modular reactors start to come. Through the 2030s, it'll be a period of build out with the uh, refurbishment at the Pickering plant, as well as the uh, renewable procurements that they're underway already at the ISO. And then there'll be opportunities for further nuclear down the road. 
that is a, our supply and demand picture in a, in a sort of power system 101 approach. Uh, I know it's a bit a lot to take in. Uh, another layer to uh, consider as you think about how this all comes together is that it all has to be pulled together by the wires that make it possible. My colleague, uh, Ahmed Maria, is up next to explain that, how that all works for you. Hello, my name is Ahmed Maria. My team is responsible for identifying what transmission projects need to get built in the province. And we do this recognizing that building more transmission lines in the province is not always the most cost-effective solution. And I'll talk a bit more uh, later on about, about how we decide whether or not to build transmission or we go with a different solution. So before me, Dave Devereaux spoke about resource planning and our growing generation supply needs. I will now speak about uh, bulk transmission planning and regional planning. Electricity planning in Ontario occurs at uh, three levels. So we start from the left of the slide. The purpose of bulk system planning is to address electricity issues that are more provincial in nature. So if you think back to what Dave was talking about in his slides, that would fall under bulk system planning. So recommendations from a bulk system planning process could include a recommendation to acquire a large amount of generation. It could also include a recommendation for a new transmission infrastructure to enable transporting large amounts of power across the province. So this level of planning is, is like planning the 400 series highways in Ontario, if you're looking for uh, an analogy. So while bulk system planning addresses issues that are provincial in nature, regional planning looks at the unique characteristics and needs of a very specific area of the province, and it produces plans that address system issues that are more local to those regions. So this level of planning is like planning for the regional and arterial roads in a major city. But now if you go to the right of the slide, distribution network planning is carried out by the local distribution companies. So a distribution network is what takes power from the transmission grid and then distributes it to the homes and businesses within your communities. And so the ISO is typically not involved at this level of electricity planning, but that's mostly taken care of by the, the local distribution companies. So what I'm going to do now is dive deeper into interregional planning, since this is the process that we use to understand your unique electricity needs. And it's also the process that we use to plan the local electricity infrastructure that supplies your communities. And so when you interact with the ISO in electricity planning, this is probably the process you'll be interacting with. So for the purposes of regional planning, Ontario is divided into 21 regions, and a regional plan is developed for each region approximately every five years. These plans are developed by a technical working group, and this group consists of the ISO, the transmitter, which is Hydro One, and the local distribution companies in the region. To develop these electricity plans, we seek input from municipalities, uh, we seek input from Indigenous communities, and we also seek input from various stakeholders at different stages in the process. This slide shows the stages in the regional planning process. So the first stage is the demand forecast. This is where we're determining how much power will be needed in the region over our planning timeframe, which is typically uh, 20 years. Once we have the demand forecast, the next stage in the regional planning process is to run studies to determine if there is sufficient local electricity supply to meet the forecasted demand for electricity. And when completing these studies, we consider the, the future outlook for any local generators in the region and we also assess the capacity of the transmission infrastructure supplying the region. So to make this a little bit more concrete, I'll give you an example, and I'll use the City of Toronto as an example. The City of Toronto is supplied by uh, 230 kV and 115 kV transmission lines and transformer stations. It's also supplied by the Portland Energy Centre, which is a 550 megawatt generator located in the centre of the city. While most of the city's power comes in, in from the transmission system the infrastructure that supplies the city, uh, Portland is also a vital source of supply, supplying approximately 12% of the city's uh, peak demand. So in the needs of assessment, if we were interested in looking at uh, reducing our reliance on natural gas generation, we would assess the capacity of the transmission system to supply the city's future electricity demand under scenarios without uh, Portland. And then if these assessments concluded that additional supply is needed, the next stage of the regional planning process is to explore different potential solutions, including new or expanded transmission lines into the region, new local generation supply, or um, energy efficiency programs targeting the, the region. And then based on the assessment of these different options, we would recommend actions to take, and then that would be the plan for the, for the region. As I mentioned earlier, we would be seeking input from municipalities, Indigenous communities, and stakeholders at each step of this process, either through webinars or in one-on-one -on -one meetings. We don't only consider transmission, we, we look at 
all the different solutions that could potentially meet the electricity supply need. And distributed energy resources is one solution that we consider as part of the regional planning process. DERs are typically small local generating units that connect to the distribution system or behind a meter. It could be solar, wind, or batteries. DERs could be an alternative to traditional infrastructure like transmission, or it could at the very least delay the need to build additional transmission um, to the region. DERs also provide a revenue to local businesses and communities while meeting the, the region's electricity needs. And so although DERs will be needed in the future and is an important part of enabling the energy transition, the energy transition cannot happen without a significant investment in our electricity transmission system. For example, the natural gas plants in Ontario are sited near major load centers. To reduce our reliance on those plants, we'll need to invest in non-emitting renewable energy such as wind farms and solar farms. And it will not be possible to site those wind farms and solar farms in the major load centers, and so we would need to build new transmission to deliver the electricity from those renewable energy sources to the load centers. So this is an example of how transmission is needed to enable the energy transition. Another example is on the demand side. In order to decarbonize Ontario's economy, major industrial customers will have to electrify their operations. For example, Algoma Steel in Sault Ste. Marie is converting to electric arc steel making, which will more than double the electricity demand in Sault Ste. Marie. So once again, new transmission is needed into the city to enable this transition. Over the past couple of years, we've seen a significant need to expand the transmission system, and our power system plans have recommended the development and construction of over $7 billion in new transmission infrastructure. And then with the energy transition that is underway, we only expect this trend to continue. We only expect to see the need for a lot more transmission in the future. And this is why um, efficient planning, siting, and construction of new transmission infrastructure in Ontario is so important. And municipalities have an important role to play in, in this process. So to further emphasize this point and to give you a picture of where we're going in the future, in our annual planning outlook, we included a schedule of planning activities, which is a summary of all the transmission plans that we'll be working on in the next several years. As shown in this slide, we'll be developing transmission plans to connect remote areas of Northern Ontario, to enable SMRs at Darlington, to enable the expansion of the Bruce Nuclear Generating Station, to connect renewable generation in Northern Ontario, to reduce our reliance on natural gas plants, and to enable economic development throughout Ontario. With that, I will now turn it back to Carla to speak about the important role Indigenous communities and municipalities play in electricity planning and to the success of the energy transition. Communities across Ontario are key to defining local, regional and provincial energy needs and solutions. You help inform electricity planning. You help develop and host new generation and electricity infrastructure. And you're playing a bigger role in where new generation, distribution, and transmission infrastructure is located. Input from Indigenous communities and municipalities helps guide the IESO in informing and supporting the work ahead. And your role in the energy transition is not just important, it is vital. So please learn more about what we're doing by visiting the ISO's website and register for our upcoming engagement and learning opportunities. We are excited for our shared journey, and we look forward to your participation to help keep Ontario growing. Thank you.